<clears throat> hey, good morning guys. Happy Sunday and I'm so excited and glad that you're here. Uh, today's word's going to be part two of the series that I've entitled God of the Harvest, God of the Harvest. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a great morning or at whatever time you're watching this. Um, let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer and then we'll dive into the worship. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your love. We thank you for who you are, God. You are eternal. Um, there is no one like you. Um, God, you show us love. Uh, you, you show love to those who don't deserve it. In your patience, no one could truly fathom, God, what it took for you to, to love us, to, to wait upon us, to be patient with us, son. Um, God, giving us uh, your blessed and um, perfect and precious son, God, and um, and yet we are still the way we are. Father, I pray for your transformation and for your spirit to work in us. We thank you. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys. So we're going to start with a, a worship song called Holy Spirit. So if you would join me.
praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> man, again, I hope you're doing well. And uh, just want to remind you guys of how many people are praying for our ministry. I know we have a, we have a small church, um, but I know for a fact that many of the adults um, who maybe you've never met are praying for this little youth ministry for us to um, really know God. And I really believe that it is not so much about numbers, but what God is doing in us and what he's preparing us for. Um, not that God doesn't care about numbers, but um, to remain focused on what he is doing. So um, let's just dive right in. We're going to be looking at the same exact passage in Matthew um, chapter 9, 35 uh, through 10, 8. So while you guys grab your Bibles, I'm going to go get mine. I'll be right back with you. <clears throat> All right, I know we uh, read it on uh, Friday, but one of the greatest things, uh, tools for learning the Bible is to read something several times. And so that's what we're going to do. So Matthew chapter nine from verse 35, 10 through ever, uh, chapter 10, eight. So here we go. Uh, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve disciples. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and, Th and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, one who, who betrayed him. These 12 disciples sent out with the following um, instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or any enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Amen. Just wanted to point out, man, what a, what a heart that God wants us to have. And, you know, when he sees the crowds, he's not just seeing people who um, are merely lost or just not doing so well. Um, the Bible gives us a clear picture, sheep without a shepherd. If you're a sheep without a shepherd, that means you have no defense against predators. You don't know you, if you get stuck somewhere or roll over on your back, um, you might not be able to live because you'll die on your back of you know starvation. Um, you don't know where water is or where you're gonna get food uh, next. And so you're pretty much dead. Um, and that, that is the severe level of hopelessness that we are in without Jesus. And so Jesus is talking about a very serious call um, it's not like, oh, you know, let's just, you know, make people feel better. No, it's, it's more like, let's save their eternity. And even as I say that, what a responsibility, what a heavy calling. It's not a, a, a light business that this soul saving thing is about. So I hope that you keep that in mind. Um, all right, so let's get into the word here. I've, uh, um, I had three points. Um, Friday, we talked about the fact that Jesus sends us. Today, we're going to talk about points number two and three, which is that he also equips us and trains us. So for point number two, I'm actually going to go through my little um, checklist of main points and then revisit them. So for my uh, second point, Jesus equips you. I have uh, two sub points. Um, that I want to talk about. So sub point number one is that when Jesus equips us, number one, God takes away and he takes away two things. He takes away the pain and the price of our past, our sin. And he also takes away um, our relationship with the world. And sub point number two is as Jesus equips us, he also uh, gives and the things that he gives us, he gives us a purpose that we were designed for and he also gives us a living hope in Jesus Christ. So um, the way that God equips us is he gives and he takes away. Uh, sub point number three is that Jesus trains us. And um, 
How he does so is he gives us the Holy Spirit and he gives us the word. Um, and we, as we look into the word, we're strengthened and we're comforted. Um, and, and at the end, I, I want to talk briefly about, um, you know, some of the questions that you may have had about, well, you know, how is the word applicable to me? Um, it's an old, it's an old document. So that is the whole sermon kind of, you know, wrapped up. So we'll go ahead and start with Jesus equips us by taking away, um, by taking away. So number one, he takes away the pain and the price of the past. Not only are your sins forgiven, but they are forgotten in that. And it's not that God literally can't remember It's that he chooses not to bring it back up to us. Um, and it's not because of anything that we did. It's not because we are good or we are worthy. It's because that is how effective and precious and eternal the blood of Jesus was. You know, uh, you know when we get a stain on a white shirt, um, let's say I get a big fat ketchup stain and I let it sit there and no matter how many times I wash it, let's say it just gets more ingrained in there. Um, let's say someone gives me like this stain remover and it just completely washes away the stain. We don't think there, we don't marvel at the stain for leaving um, or, or the shirt. We look, we marvel at the, the remover of the stain and that's Jesus. He removes the stain of sin from our lives and makes as white as snow. Um, when we, uh, God also takes away our relationship with the world. And so there are certain things we, we no longer do. Um, we cannot follow God and at the same time follow the world. We cannot both have God as our master and money as our master. As the Bible says, um, not money, but the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now, we cannot both worship ourselves and worship God. Uh, we cannot uh, worship another human being or, uh, you know, idola tries, uh, you know, a thing or a car or, or a goal or, or money or girls or boys um, or status. It's it, only God. In other words, we can't be chained to God and still um, live for God. Uh, we must cut our ties um, from one direction and go running in the opposite direction. Um, so that's what God takes away. God also gives. He gives us a purpose that we are designed for. He knows our days and he's the one who's given us our purpose. That is God's perfect and provident authority over us. And um, that is to bring home the lost and to proclaim the good news, to shine a light in the darkness. Um, and uh, one thing that we are reminded to do in Philippians 3, 13 through 14 is this. Um, Paul writes, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So our, our purpose is to preach the gospel and to bring the kingdom of God, uh, to bring the love and justice of God, and we push forward towards that. We don't look back. Um, and in the same vein, God also gives us a living hope in Jesus Christ. So uh, Jesus not only took care of our past by dying for our sins and making us clean and removing the weight and the penalty of that condemnation, Jesus also took care of our future by raising himself from the dead and saying, death, you no longer have the final word. Therefore, when we look out into the horizon that we, we call life, at the end isn't a small sign that says, here is the end and that is death. That is not the final chapter. Um, that now Jesus abolished, he defeated death and he shut it down and he said, now when you get to, to the end of your life, uh, what you have is more. You see the eternity of life in Jesus Christ. And so he no longer takes away our past, but he also takes care of our future. Um, and that's what we mean by Jesus as our living hope. Um, so that is point uh, number two. Um, so point number three, Jesus trains us. He gives us his Holy Spirit. And uh, just as a reminder, I know these are things you might have already been taught, but the Holy Spirit guides us. He helps us. He intercedes for us, meaning he prays for us. And sometimes we don't even know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit um, communicates with the Father and the Son on our behalf. Um, he teaches us, he counsels us, and he also works a transformation in our lives. 
um, in regards to Jesus training us, the training manual is the Word of God. Um, I know there's a lot of jokes about, you know, guys, when we get something, we just toss the manuals out. But I don't know, maybe I'm getting old or maybe I'm not as manly as other guys, but I like to look at the manual. I actually, I like to look up YouTube videos and, and watch the tutorial before I start because I know that if I just go ahead and do things, I'll probably waste a lot of time or break something. Um, so it is, the, the Word of God is a training manual. In Proverbs, it says that the wisdom with which God created the heavens and the earth is the wisdom, that is the wisdom of God. That, that is how cool God's wisdom is and how high and above it is. And this is the wisdom that is available to us. Um, that the word in Psalms it says, that, you know, uh, the, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So imagine stumbling in the dark versus having a brightly lit flashlight just aiming way ahead of you, making everything clear. You might not know what's around the bend, but you definitely know what you see before you with all the lies, with all the false teaching, with all the confusion and uncertainty and the complexities of life. When you read into the word, you have this, you know certain things are true and they will not change. And that is that clarity, that beam of clarity that we have through the word of God. God's word not only trains us though, um, but it also strengthens us and com comforts us. So the training com <clears throat> comes in the form of going to God when things get hard. I know for myself and many people that when you get stressed, your knee-jerk reaction is to either, I don't know, go to sleep. For me, it was to sleep. Other people might be, uh, for me too, to eat, um, to binge eat or to just shut down. Or some people, when they get stressed, they just wanna talk, talk, talk. Um, or, you know, just do something, or it might be to do drugs or alcohol. Um, but what God trains us to do is when things get hard is go to him, go to the word, go into scripture to find your strength and to be comfort, uh, to be comforted. And this is one of the, um, the most comforting verses I've read in a long time. And that's Hebrews chapter four, uh, verses 15 through 16. It says this, Jesus understands every weakness of ours because he was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. So whenever we are in need, we should come bravely before the throne of our merciful God. Uh, there we will be treated with undeserved kindness and we will find help. How amazing is that? Even if we struggle and we fall, even if we prove to ourselves over and again how weak and how uh, inadept we are, or just, you know, we're, we're so prone to failure. God says, come to the throne. I understand your struggle. I understand your weakness. I lived through it and, and I can help you. And that is, that is how good our God is. <clears throat> And uh, the final point I wanted to talk about is, um, is really a question. How many of us really want to hear the voice of God? And wouldn't that be nice if you just had like God's phone number, <laughs> you know, like um, things are going tough or you just had a bad day. You're like, man, I just want to give God a call. I just want to hear his comforting voice on the other line. Um, you know, we don't have that, but God, we have something better. And um, what we have is the Bible. Um, this very thing right here, it's as if God has already heard all of our deepest and darkest and toughest times. Um, he's heard it all and he knows us all the way through. And he wrote us this love letter and instruction manual and guidance and comfort um, into this. And um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to remind us that he did that. 2,000 years ago, and he made his message possible to us through the inspiration of imperfect man. So, you know, how is that going to help me living 2,000 years later? How can you even know how to solve my problem when I haven't even told you yet? And you're saying you wrote it two years ago. You know, it sounds like some kind of magic trick, like, you know, write down your number. Oh, here it is. I already know, you know, but you know, it, I want to ask you a question. If God could create the universe simply by speaking it into existence. Don't you think God can, is also capable of writing down his message, albeit through mere mortal man, through his handwriting, inspired through the Holy Spirit? If God can do the universe, I'm sure that he could have put together the Bible and get everything in there that he meant um, there to be in the way he wanted. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing to think about 
but, but that's, I believe if he can do that, he can do the other thing. And here's another thing about the word. We might think of it as pre-written 2,000 years ago. How is that going to help my day-to-day change? Well, here's the thing. The word of God is living and active, it says in Hebrew. In John, it says that the word of God is Jesus. Crazy, right? The word of God is Jesus. Like, I can't even get my mind around that. Like, that's so crazy to think about. But, you know, if Jesus can come from heaven as eternal God and step down from his throne and enter our world into a manger as a baby, then if he could do that, surely he can encapsulate his heart and, and, and put down the spirit and the truth and the vigor and, and the love of, of who he is um, and, and put it into, um, into a Bible. I'm not saying the Bible contains everything. There are other mysteries. There is an in, in, infinity of things about God that cannot be contained. I mean, in John, it says that Jesus did far more. And if they all of them were written down, perhaps the world could not contain all the books that would be written. But what we need to know, God has put into a finite source, which is actually him. So it's also infinite. Um, but I want to put it this way. You know, right here, what we have is a piece of wood with six strings attached to it. It's very finite. You know, we only have uh, is it a, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's uh, seven notes, you know. Uh, if you wanna count the octave eight, if you wanna count the sharps and the flats, you know, you get what I'm saying. You have a limited amount, and yet with that, many people were able to write songs and, and create performances that often moved people to tears and inspired them. Um, and made a lot of money too. And so many things could be um, dreamed up and created by a man, by finite man from just a piece of wood and some strings. How much more can an infinite and amazing and perfect God do through, through language and words? Um, it's unbelievable. And that is what we have in the word of God. Uh, what the very heart of his that he has revealed to us. So I encourage you that you hear the calling that you have been called to go out and make a difference, to proclaim the word of God. And in order to do that, understand that um, God has equipped you by taking away your past, giving you a future and a purpose. And he's also training you. He doesn't just strap a gun on your shoulder that you don't know how to use. He trains us and he's there with us every step of the way. And he gives us that book, which is the most humbling, which is the most low key, which is the most tricky thing because that just looks like a book but it is actually in it contains the infinite mysteries of the universe um, that's because god wrote it and that is his story so i i encourage you once again to to dive in and not be afraid um, and that's the word for today thank you so much for listening and i pray that you're challenged let's go ahead and wrap this up with a word of prayer heavenly father i pray that uh, we would um, continue to get into your word, Father, to meet with you, to see the word with fresh eyes through a new lens of faith, um, God, that we would dive in hungry and yearning to learn more about you, um, that we would be students of your word and truth, God, that we would not be shaken or, or, or thrown off track by uh, the ideologies, the, the fake uh, teachings, the, the, the man-made um, things of this world, but that we would stand firmly on your truth because the entire world will pass away. But God, you promised that the word will never pass. Um, so on your word, we stand. Um, on your word, we feed and are, are refreshed and satisfied. God, would you be with us this week as we continue to live our lives for you? Um, we pray and we thank you in all God's name. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye now.